Hey guys, today I'm going to talk to you about the Celestron 8SE Schmidt Cassegrain OTA and go-to mount. A lot of you have this as your starting go-to and I wanted to give you my experience since I've used that and that was my first starting rig. My name's John Robinson, you've tuned in to Deep Sky Channel. Okay, so today I'm talking about the Celestron 8 SE. Let me start off by saying that uh, this video is not endorsed by Celestron at all. I'm just giving you my own personal uh, observations about having used and enjoyed this telescope. First of all, explanation, what's this thing on my nose? Well, I've got a bit of a summer cold. This thing opens the nostrils a bit so I can breathe. So just ignore that and let's get into the review. So I, I guess you could say Celestron 8SE, the Schmidt Cassegrain, was my second telescope. My first one was a cheap, uh, I think I bought it at Sears at the time. But the Celestron was my first attempt uh, to really get into astrophotography. So I, what appealed to me about it was, first of all, it was very lightweight and affordable. And it had a pretty big uh, objective lens, 8 inches and you could use it for both visual and astro so that got me hooked so I went ahead and made the purchase in January of this year and I played with it for a good four months I started out by doing just visual observations with the telescope using the Altaz mount and I fell in love with what I was seeing I was seeing some amazing things in this telescope through the little uh, one and a quarter inch eyepiece and then I decided, well, you know what, let's take a photo of that. So I happened to be on Orion, and I put my little cell phone up there. And I was trying to take a picture through the eyepiece of Orion M42 Nebula. And then I realized, you know what, they, they make cameras for this. Why don't I investigate it? So one thing led to another. I bought a astrophotography camera, and, uh, you know, this particular telescope allows for you to both do visual observation at the back as well as do add camera accessories in the back. It does have its limitations, but it also has its advantages. Basically, it's a good starting rig, and I recommend it for you know people who are really getting into the hobby. The positives of this are it's lightweight, and it's low cost, and it's very good for planetary. Uh, and it can be used for astrophotography, but it's mostly for visual, I would say. You know, another nice feature of this telescope is its go-to mount. It's simple, it's easy to use, and it comes programmed with a lot of objects and stars and planets inside so that you can, first of all, easily align yourself to the night sky and then easily find the targets uh, without any fancy uh, third-party computer or software. Everything's built into the unit itself and you can just, you know, tell the telescope to go point to that object and look in the eyepiece and voila, there it is to your amazement. That's a kind of a cool thing. Okay, so this is my Celestron 8SE Schmidt Cassegrain 8-inch telescope or OTA. This is the way it was shipped. I bought this off of Amazon uh, as it is for, I think it was $8.99. So it was a pretty good deal. Came with the Altaz mount, came with the OTA. This on the back, and you can get a little bit closer, this is uh, for astrophotography. So I screwed off the eyepiece and installed this. This is the autofocuser, and then attached to this is the camera. Now I have the camera attached to my other telescope at the moment, but this is where it goes. If you want to put the eyepiece back on, you just basically unscrew this whole assembly. It comes right off of the back of here, and then you bolt in the eyepiece, which I'll show you in a second. Okay, so let's talk about this telescope. First of all, this uh, Altaz mount here, you can see these dials here. Basically, this is a go-to. You just uh, tell it where it is in the sky, and once it knows its, its way around, it will basically direct you to anything that you want to see. You know, Jupiter, or the stars, or Pleiades, or Orion. You can see all of these things visually through the eyepiece. And it's a pretty compact unit, all contained within with no fancy software or external connection. 
this thing will find any object in the sky. So it's pretty neat, it's pretty low cost, and it's very portable. This thing's very light. This is about a 2,080 millimeter focal length. The way the light works is it comes to the front, travels through the back, hits a mirror, travels back up to the center, hits another mirror, and then travels back down. So that bouncing up and down is a total focal length of 2,080 millimeters or two meters basically. And uh, that's why it has such a, a long focal ratio of F10. Now inside of here is a focal reducer that brings it down to F6.3 which is more reasonable um, and also makes it so that you're not so focused in, it widens your field of view a little bit. Now this has a star finder attached to it. The star finder is cheap. I wouldn't expect you to get much out of it. Uh, and the complaint I have is that it's difficult to align the star finder to the actual star. I had to actually install, I think you can see it, a little dime under there to get the dang thing to align properly. But you know, it is cheap, that's okay, it goes with the theme I guess. I installed this aftermarket piece here because when I started to use this telescope for astrophotography, I needed to install a guiding camera on here. So that's what I did. Let's take a look at the front of this unit here. And you can just kind of see the 8 inch aperture with the mirror going down and then it hits another mirror here and then it goes back down the center. So I would say the positives about this mount is it's very lightweight, it's very affordable and it's all self-contained. You don't need any external hardware software. It can do visual and it it's somewhat limited but it can do astrophotography as well. The downsides of this, the negatives, would be uh, the stars. When you take a picture of the stars, they're fat. They're not really pinpoint stars, they just have a tendency to be fat. Also the mirror in here has a tendency to shift and drift and you need to collimate this thing constantly. It's always out of alignment. They make more expensive units called the Edge HD which has a locking mirror in there and the Rasas of course. Those are much more expensive instruments but uh, this is mostly for visual not so much for astro. Uh, let's see, the other disadvantage is when you do take pictures you're going to see in addition to fat stars, a lot fewer stars. It's just faint. It's dim. And uh, yeah, but overall I would say if you're into uh, visual imaging or, or just visual viewing, casual viewing, and maybe into photographing planetary, this would be a great little unit to get started with. Now I did purchase separately this Orion set uh, which goes with the Celestron unit. And this is basically a two-inch eyepiece assembly. So here's the default um, angle, 90-degree angle that goes in there for visual with 1.25-inch uh, sized, you know, units there. But I upgraded this one because I wanted to get to two-inch. So this also fits on there, but it also comes with a couple of these eyepieces, which I like. That 28, which I use most of the time for more of a wide field, it has a 35, a 42. Also has this 2x Barlow in here. So yeah, this was a good little addition to that unit over there. And the way this would work, you just take this this 90 degree here, you screw the autofocuser off, and this goes in its place. Now I happen to have, and maybe you can see it in there, on the back of this thing, I have a light pollution filter connected to that thing in front of all the other imaging stuff that I have going on. And I have a lesson learned here. Don't over-tighten those dang things. So I over-tightened that light pollution filter. Now I can't get the bugger off. <laughs> so I leave it on there all the time. Lesson learned. Don't over-tighten. Just hand-tight. That's all you need to do. Okay, guys. That's it for this week. I hope that was useful information to you if you're thinking about the Celestron 8SE. Uh, I, I thought I'd close this video out by showing you some of the photos that I've actually taken uh, using the 8SE OTA. And here they are. See you next time. Bye.